Hello, welcome to this video. Our lesson today will be looking at transport across the cell membrane, that is diffusion osmosis and active transport. I'm previous tutor, don't forget to subscribe and like my videos. Let's look at the introduction. We have substances enter and leave the cell through the cell membrane using three main processes, and these are diffusion osmosis and active transport so these are the three main processes substances enter a cell through <laughs> let's look at diffusion the diffusion is the movement of particles from their region of high concentration to the region of lower concentration, down concentration gradient. What do we mean by that? Let's look, let's see this as an example. Then let me put this barrier here. We have particles here. Let's say we have more particles. Then here, we have less particles. Now, particles in this case, they stand for concentration, all right? So, when particles are moving from region of high concentration, when here there's more particles means more concentration. Less particles, less concentration. So what happens? There is more concentration this side. So it has to move from where it is high to where it is low so that it can reach what we call dynamic equilibrium. It's a state at which the particles are in two regions are equal. Let's look at the factors affecting the concentration, the, the rate of uh, diffusion. The rate at which particles diffuse is affected by the following. The first one is a concentration gradient. Usually, concentration gradient is represented by a slope, like it's a gradient, so it's a slope. This refers to the difference in concentration between two regions, like I said. If this is region one, region one, and region 2. Like I said, less particles, more particles. So what happens? When this one has got low concentration, this one has got high concentration. That same difference in the concentration is what we call the concentration gradient. Now say the higher the concentration gradient, the faster the diffusion rate. Surface area of the diffusion. Now what is surface area? Surface area has to do with the how big the particles are or how small the particles are. So it says the larger the size, the surface area of the diffusion surface, the faster the rate of diffusion. On the other hand, when the surface area is small, there is a low all right, rate of diffusion. What of the, this? So this is our third factor that affects the diffusion rate. Thickness of diffusion surface. How thick it is. The thinner the diffusion surface, the faster. Let's just take for, for instance, we have something here which is thick and something which is thin. And the particles are trying to end, right? Particles are trying to end. At which one will they move fast? At this one, because this one, the walls are small. And the, 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 the surface is actually thin. So here, the diffusion will be higher and compared when it's thick. Third one, the fourth one is temperature. Increase in temperature increases the kinetic energy of particles, causing them to diffuse at a faster rate. Now, whenever you're asked to, to explain how temperature affects the rate of diffusion, you talk about on both sides, the negative side and the positive side. 
when you're talking about the positive side don't forget to mention the kinetic energy all right once you mention the kinetic energy talk about the speed of the particles how do they move when there's high temperature the particles they gain more kinetic energy and they move faster the the faster they move the more the rate of the or, or, of diffusion increases but when the temperature is low they have less kinetic energy that means they have less speed they can't collide faster so they are they won't move fast hence the rate of diffusion is slow size of diffusing particles if the particle is big and if the particle is small which one is going to move faster the bigger the diffusing particle, the slower the diffusion rate. You can, you can even just take, for example, if I have to throw a stone with 50 kg and someone is throwing a stone with 2 milligram, the one with the smaller stone is going to throw faster as compared to someone with a 50 kg stone. So that's just something that you have to uh, relate to derive. When you have the particles are bigger, the diffusion rate is actually slow. But when the Particle, the particles are smaller in size, the diffusion is fast. Now, we have talked about diffusion in several occasions, and we wonder if diffusion actually has got some important things in plants and animals. Let's look at this. Diffusion is important in living organisms in the following. One, oxygen from the lungs to the blood and from the blood to the tissue cells is by diffusion. When oxygen is moving from the lungs to the uh, in, in, into the bloodstream, we we know that uh, the alveolar, yeah? the alveolar has got something like that, and the the blood uh, passes like there. So oxygen is is moving from here to this blood is to, to 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 the bloodstream in the blood capillary. It's through what? It's through diffusion. Then oxygen moves. Okay, carbon dioxide moves from the two cells to the blood. Now, at the same time, carbon dioxide is going to move out of here, going in here, so that it can be expelled outside. It's also through diffusion. Dissolved food moves through the blood into the two cells by diffusion. When you eat food, those foods have been absorbed. Now, once the food nutrients have been absorbed, they move from the bloodstream into the tissue cells. It's that by diffusion as well. Even in waste metabolic uh, me metabolic waste such as urea, carbon dioxide, they all move through from the two cells into the blood by diffusion. So actually diffusion is very important and you must know how to explain this in an essay form for example or sometimes they can ask you in one word answer. Carbon dioxide need for, needed for photosynthesis by plants moves from the atmosphere into the leaves by diffusion. This is very nice. So carbon dioxide which is captured from the atmosphere, it actually enters the leaf by diffusion. Actually plants benefit. Oxygen produced produce during photosynthesis moves out of the leaves to the atmosphere by diffusion. So when you look at photosynthesis itself, so it, there's diffusion occurring there. There's carbon dioxide entering the leaf by diffusion. There's oxygen leaving the leaf after photosynthesis is cut also by diffusion water vapor moves out of the hair spaces of the leaves to the atmosphere during transpiration by diffusion wow that's amazing actually this is the end of the lecture i'll see in the next video please don't forget to, sub to, to, to subscribe we have to hit 2k and share my videos comment where you feel like you didn't understand i'll be able to get back to you thank you so much in the next video.